Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and today we're going to go over the macOS Big Sur Beta 9 update. I'm going to go over some of the new features, resolved issues, standing known issues, some of the stats of the update, how long it takes to, to install, how large the update is, and I'm going to go over some of the uh, issues that users have reported in that aren't anywhere in the notes and you're probably going to want to stick around for that because there might be something that you're having an issue with and I might show if it's fixed or not. Let's get started. This update has actually come out only one week after beta 8. So that shows that Apple's really starting to tighten up this schedule here and we're getting, we're getting closer to launch here. Um, I've got my other article here, my Big Sur Need to Know Changes and Links uh, article, and I can kind of show you here the, the Catalina schedule and how that went. The Big Sur, uh, Apple does not have to really follow this, but they, they, they're keeping a pretty close um, uh, track here on how Catalina was launched. So if you look at this here, we're on, we're on beta 9, and Apple went one more beta to 10. And then one week later, went to Gold Master. And if you're not sure what Gold Master means, that's back in the days when Apple used to make, um, and actually any software maker uh, would put software on CDs. So that's the version that they would ship on the DVD or the CD because that would they would print it and then that's it. There's no changing it. So when we get to Gold Master, usually that's it. We're going to get production. So if you look at the schedule, we're looking at maybe two weeks here. That's it. We're ready to go, and we're going to have Big Sur live. So let's get back here and go over some of the um, the stats of the update. Um, we've got uh, in the developer notes it shows two two new features, eleven resolved issues, ten standing known issues that still need to be resolved because they're not fixed yet. So hopefully we'll see that in ten. Uh, one Apple Seed new feature, and one Apple Seed resolved issue. Um, we got some of the patch. Uh, we don't have the, one of the biggest problems is we don't have a full installer for beta nine. So that means if you want to install uh, Big Sur fresh, or you have a USB installer, you want to just download it and in, 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 on Catalina and try it out, you're going to get beta six, and that's a huge bummer. We I would have figured that we would have had a full installer by now. So I'm going to make sure that I contact Apple and let them know that we need full installers for these updates. If you're trying to test your workflows or doing any of that stuff, we're just wasting time installing six, then wasting another hour to download the updates and install them just to be current. Um, we've got the Delta update and we've got the combo update. If you have beta eight, you're gonna get the Delta update. That's only for one, one version behind and that's 3.5 gigabytes. If you have anywhere with seven or, or lower than that, you're gonna get the larger combo update, which includes all the previous fixes, and that's 3.82 gigabytes. We're also getting a T2 bridge update for your T2 chips for all 2018 and newer MacBook Pros, uh, Mac, Mac Pros and iMac Pro and Mac Minis. Uh, that brings the BridgeOS version to 18.16.12390. And you can see here, I kind of keep the previous uh, uh, build versions here. It was, uh, the, the previous one was 12.380. Let's get, let's jump right into some of these fixes here. Um, one of the ones, one of the, one of the biggest things is, is that, um, System administrators have been asking Apple to give us the ability to manage screen recording. And if you're not sure what that is, I can show you that real quick. It's basically inside the new uh, system private security and privacy menu here. And we'll scroll down and we can see screen recording. And what that means is, is that if you have any kind of application like Teams, WebEx, uh, any kind of remote access uh, software that will let you remote control your, your system like BombGar or something like that, um, it needs to be able to see your screen. So you need to be able to go in here and check mark this and say, okay, I allow that. It's kind of a nice feature because malware or any kind of rogue apps that you install that are embedded through the app store won't be able to record your screen uh, unless you say, I specifically say, yes, you can do that. So you can see here, it's grayed out. I'm a standard user. I can't go in here and change that. In Catalina, you could, 
But the good news is now we have controls for that. We have MDM controls, mobile device management controls, where we'll be able to send a profile down where we will be able to manage the different applications in the profile. So it's not exa exactly what we wanted. We wanted to just say, hey, we want to just allow all standard users to do that. But instead, we have, unfortunately, we're going to have to put in each individual app that we want users, that standard users, to be able to approve. If you're an admin user and you don't have to worry about that, you're going to be able to approve that all day long. Uh, let's go to the next one. The Active Directory is still not functioning in beta nine this broke in beta seven it was working just fine in six it's it still was still not working in eight and it's still busted in, in nine hopefully we can get this fixed um for enterprise users that use active directory the next thing is xcode command line tools are now available i've seen a couple complaints saying where in the heck are these command line tools for 12.2 beta 2 they are now available you can download them there was another bug where you would walk through the Big Sur Setup Assistant and you could not click continue. I think it was the uh, Siri recordings where it, where it would, the, uh, the continue button would just be straight up grayed out and you couldn't even do anything. Um, and that's been fixed. The Beta 9, I just finished installing it and on this particular machine. So normally we'll go into System Preferences and we'll go to software update and we'll see it'll say checking for updates here and it'll show up and say hey you've got updates to install and i tried that i just hit install it says i'm up to date i've actually got a nice screenshot that i can kind of show you guys what that looked like here i think that's this one right here yep here it is so it says you know you have an update available and it's mac os big Sur beta 9. so i hit update now and then we'll get the next screen here that it comes up and you can see that's the the the, um, the update and you click, click install now and then I moved to this progress bar here and it was downloading the whole thing and I was keeping an eye on activity monitor on the network and it was downloading I was like okay great 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 but it was sitting on here forever I'm like something must be going wrong and it was sitting in there for like a half hour so no big deal there's multiple ways we can install this update. I restarted and then I used the software update binary. And I'll show you what that looks like here. I've got a screenshot of this. So all you need to do is do a software update dash L and you can do use the same software update that you use in the GUI. And of course, here it is. I found the Big Sur update and then I ran the, I ran a software, pseudo software update dash I A capital R. That does install all and do an automatic restart when done. So there it goes. It checked. It found the software. It says it's downloading, but it, it just got stuck at 0.10% and it wasn't moving anywhere. So I opened up the activity monitor and it wasn't moving. So I'm like, what the heck? So I tried it again and I, re I restarted again and I ran the command again. And sure enough, here we go. It went. I can't tell you what's wrong. I do know that tonight particular on the, on the 30th, September 30th, there was a, a bunch of services that Apple was having with the, their App Store. And I can show you that real quick, what that looks like. System status. And you can look at the status page whenever there's a problem. And it, it actually, you, see, you can see these. There was resolved issues. And I think we got the app. So here we go. The App Store, uh, one resolved outage and one resolved issue. And you can see that it was having issues today. So it's very possible that that, that that could have been some of the problems. And I've seen other people report on Reddit and the Apple discussion forums that they were having problems getting the update to show up. So that could have been it today. Uh, but this is a great page. If you're having to to problems downloading, you can always check. And you can see there was multiple services out today. So it was a really kind of a crazy day. So that could have been uh, some of the problems. So. Uh, back to the, back to this install, so you can see here it's downloading that update, um, and and the nice thing about this is it'll count up and it, it, until it's done downloading, and you can actually use a, a really nice command called netstat um, to be able to see uh, your current download set. You can do netstat dash m space tcp, and I can show you what that looks like. You can actually watch all the downloads. 
um, that are currently working on your system. And I can and you can highlight this. So for example, here you can see this is where the update was downloading and this keeps counting up. And that kind of gives you a status of how much you've downloaded. The same thing with activity monitor. If you go into activity monitor, it will give you kind of a picture of how much you've downloaded. See data received here 1.94 gigabytes. That kind of gives you an idea. And you can see the data received per second. That's how you can measure your network speed. So I was getting about four megabytes a second uh, download speed from Apple servers when I was downloading this update. So yeah, that was kind of a kind of a bumpy start. Then it re then then the th here's the kicker. It moved into a preparing update. And this is where it kind of just sat there. So I've got another screenshot showing you guys what that looks like here. Um, and, I, and I show you over here, when I took the screenshot, it says downloading, but we're not downloading anymore because I, I changed the activity monitor to disk and you can see that this thing's writing, it's reading, you know, 40 megabytes a second. So you can tell that the installer is definitely preparing right now. And the problem here is, is that this thing took like 45 minutes to, to prepare. So it's very possible that if I would have just left it on the GUI to continue, it would have just ran. So with this particular update, guys, give it some time. If it's on, if it's like this, let me up the, open, open up this one. There. If it's sitting on this prepare, let it go. It, it might take up to an hour to go. It shouldn't take this long at all. A normal beta update should only take about five minutes max to prepare and restart. That's even pushing it. It should take two minutes to prepare and restart because all the all the actions being happening happening not outside the operating system. So that was my kind of adventure getting Beta 9 to install. Let me know in the comments. Did you, did you install Beta 9? Did did it take as long as it's taken me? Maybe it was just a fluke on this particular device. And I would love to hear from you. So um, let's get back here. Oh. Quick look, quick look, quick look. Um, that was broken in the previous releases. And what, what do I mean by that? Um, if you tried to go into, and I'll show you this, go into, let's say, your documents, and you wanted to actually want to go to desktop. And let's say you just wanted to look at this screenshot here. You hit the space bar for a quick look. And look at that. I can see what that, what that looks like without even opening it. And that's a really great, cool feature. But in, in the previous beta, beta 8, look what, it, look what would happen. You would do a quick look and it would be blank, busted. It's fixed now. Really great that that got fixed. Um, let's see here. Oh, system preferences. There was a ton of reports with system preferences, slowness, locking up, the security and privacy pane not opening up, and it seems to be a lot better with this particular update. You can see it loaded quick. I can go into desktop and screensaver pretty quickly here with no real kind of lag. Dock and menu bar items seems to load pretty quick. And especially security and privacy was having trouble loading, and it seems to load okay. So I'm hoping that they get they got that fixed. What'll be interesting to see is if they have um, some of the the system and kernel extensions that are in here that might be trying to load um, under the general tab. You'll see it here if you if like 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 an example is if you install like a VPN software like Cisco AnyConnect. Some of the older versions install the kernel extension, and you'll get a warning message here saying like, "Hey, you've got you've got to approve this." And I think that was some of the causes of the slowness trying to open up security and preferences uh, or security and privacy pain. The good thing is, is that's fixed. AirPod Pro automatic switching. Um, I'm I'm getting multiple reports that this seems to be not fixed in 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 beta nine. Um, some of the reports are saying that it was like halfway working and glitchy in the other updates. So if you guys have tried this and it's works, you know, again, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to see if they were able to get this fixed, but if from the, the reports that I've seen so far, it's still not fixed in beta nine. YouTube 4K video, I know a lot of, of you have been asking about this, Is can this finally work in beta nine? And I've got some great news for you, look at this. I've got a little video here that I pulled up and let's, let's hit play here. Let's go to the settings here. Now, what's interesting is when you click the quality, it looks like it almost kind of looks like you only have this certain amount here um, that you can play, but it's kind of hidden. You actually got to scroll all the way up, all the way to you can hit that sweet 4K. Look at this. Boom. 4K. Beautiful. 
Look at that. That is some that is really high quality video. So that's wonderful that that's finally fixed. Um, let's close this out here and get back. Um, Cisco IPsec VPN issues. So if you wanted to install your VPN through the um, the native uh, network here and you would install it and it would be in here and then you would have it in your menu bar, that was not working. It was just flat out not connecting. So you, what you would do is you would click this and you would do a new IP. Where the heck is it? Uh, shoot, I can't even remember how to set that up. But the good thing is, is that that is set up and working right now. I've got multiple reports in that that they were able, or they were not able to connect in beta seven and beta eight, but now with beta nine, they're able to connect to with Cisco um, IPsec VPN menu bar spacing. This is a weird one. So if you look over here in the menu bar, um, they actually tighten up the spacing. And I I grabbed the screenshot before I updated so I can prove it to you. If we bring this over here and kind of line it up, sure enough. Look, look where we're at. Each 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 step here is, is longer in in beta eight, and you can see they really kind of tighten them up. And they probably did that because a lot of people have a of a ton of menu of our items, and we're kind of creeping into almost getting into help over here a little bit farther. So good thing they did tighten it up because it looks a lot better now. Um. Apple Watch can't be paired to unlock your Mac. So this is a really cool feature. If you got an Apple Watch, you can use it just to unlock your Mac at the screensaver. This is this for some reason does not seem to be working. I found a, a nice thread that someone put together here that shows some some workarounds that you can do to, to get this to work if you if you're trying to get that feature to work. And that's about it uh, for some of the the smaller fixes. What I've got here is I've got some other neat little fixes here or not fixes, ch changes um, to icons. And someone on Reddit put this together and it shows the difference between Beta 8 and Beta 9's uh, App Store icon. It, they like darkened it and added some, uh, or actually they took away, this is the new, uh, they took away some of the shadowing. So you can kind of see on this side, you can kind of see the shadowing and the darkness here. And it's a little bit lighter here. I don't know, I kind of like this version. I, I don't know, I don't really like this one. Um, and they changed the QuickTime um, uh, icon too. Now, what's interesting is I got them reversed. This is actually, usually the first one goes over here, but this, this is what beta eight looks like. And this is beta nine. And honestly, I like the beta nine a lot better than the beta, beta um, eight. So that's kind of cool. Um, back to the size of the updates, um, I grabbed the screen grab of that so we can kind of see how much um, system space we took on beta 8. And we had 14.84 gigabytes on beta 8 and on beta 9 we're taking 15.07. So we went up a little bit but not too much to, to really worry about here. So... I think that's about it. Um, this video took a lot longer because honestly, I was able to track down a lot more fixes and little changes um, in beta nine than I originally thought I was gonna be able to do. I hope this video um, was informative to you guys. I really appreciate all the views. Um, if you wanna get more of this type of content, I would appreciate a, a subscribe. Really would appreciate that. Um, We'll uh, talk to you on the next video. You have a good night now.